from Microbe TV, this is Beyond the Noise, episode number 26, recorded on January 10, 2024. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. Hello, Paul. This is the video version of Paul's column on Substack called Beyond the Noise, Cutting to the Chase on Important Health Topics. And today, the last few episodes, we've been talking about how labels matter, that words make a big difference. And today, we're going to look at Paul's column for this week called Labels Matter, VAERS, V-A-E-R-S. What is VAERS, Paul? Right, so VAERS stands for Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System. Um, it was part of the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, which was passed in 86 and effected in 88, so it was during the Reagan administration. And it was a consequence of what had been a flood of litigation that started in the early 80s with really the publication or, or uh, on air on NBC of a piece called DPT Vaccine Roulette, which claimed that the pertussis or whooping cough vaccine caused permanent uh, harm, specifically uh, neurological harm, seizures, dis uh, autism, uh, um, and other uh, disabilities. And that led to a flood of litigation that really drove a lot of vaccine makers out of, off the market. I mean, we had 55 vaccine makers, or sorry, 27 vaccine makers in 1955. We had 18 in 1980. But after the publication of that, really, it was driven down to four. And there were there were there was only one company still willing to make the pertussis vaccine, and they were about to abandon it. Hence, the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, which included the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, which was at least a, a barrier to just directly suing pharmaceutical companies uh, in court, although you still can, you just have to go through that program first. So that, that was it. It was the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, which um, is, is at best sort of it's a hypothesis generating mechanism. Anybody can report to it. If you got a vaccine and you think you were harmed by the vaccine, your child was harmed, you can report. It's pretty simple. Just fill out a one page form online. So it's a very noisy system. Obviously, much of what is reported is not necessarily caused by vaccines because it doesn't provide that information. In order to know whether a vaccine uh, is causing a problem, you need to know uh, who got the vaccine and who didn't to see whether or not there was a, um, a greater incidence in the vaccinated group. And only, and, and only the vaccine safety data link or things like that can really answer that kind of question. The virus can't do that. It's at best, it raises a hypothesis, but it can never test it. So uh, anyone can go and fill out a form, right? Right and did uh, the the my favorite is Jim Laidler, who's a uh, physician in uh, in uh, Portland, Oregon, who basically filled out a form saying that he was got a vaccine and he turned into the Incredible Hulk. So that's there, that's there in in that program, and it's it's publicly available. So that makes it all the right more ripe for misuse. Anybody can look on that form and go and look on that program and go, oh my God, look at all these these reports of you know deaths or. Uh, or seizures, and obviously the vaccines must be doing it because it's called the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, which presumably means only vaccine-associated adverse events reported, which isn't true. So the doctor who did the Hulk reporting, he did that to demonstrate that anyone could put anything in there, right? And that there's no screening, that everything ends up, that, that if it's reported, it's in that program, and uh, that was his point. So, so you write in the article that Tucker Carlson reported that over 3,000 people were killed by COVID vaccine. So how would he get that from VAERS? Right, because if, if you've gotten a vaccine and then within two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or six months or a year, whatever, you, you, you know, a, a friend of yours died or a child died or some family member died, you can report it to that system. But the question is, did the vaccine cause that death? And when it's been investigated... That, ha that, that hasn't been true. I mean, where, where VAERS works, and, and the first time it worked so was, was in the late 90s. So, so it, it really launched in the late 80s. It took 10 years before that, that system was ever found to offer anything. And that was with Rotashield, this, uh, this simian human reassortant rotavirus vaccine that was introduced by Wyeth in the late 90s was found to be a rare cause of intussusception 
which is a, a sort of an intestinal blockage where a uh, part of your small intestine kind of telescopes or folds into a more distal part and gets stuck, which can be, you know, a serious medical problem. And so there were cases that were reported to, into that system in children who were two months of age, three months of age, which was a little young to get this particular interception problem. So that then triggered then the kinds of studies in the vaccine safety data link to look in real time who was getting the vaccine, who wasn't. Was this really a, a causal and not coincidence? Dental association, and it was a causal association. So it worked there, and I think it also worked with regard to myocarditis. Those myocarditis cases were reported to VAERS, and then you could look to see whether you were more likely to get it. So, so it, it does have some um, use. Unfortunately, it's massively misused, as Tucker Carlson showed. So did he know that it's just an association, or did he take advantage of the numbers to try and get some attention? No, I think often when when you when you see these kinds of reports uh, from, the, from anti-vaccine activists um, or people who are like Tucker Carlson who certainly don't support vaccines, um, it's often bears that they go to, and and I think it's it's. Um, I don't know what to say. Maybe we could go back in time. At the very least, rename it, uh, because I think any reasonable person who looks at that title, Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, assume it's just yeah. Vaccine Adverse Events. So call it suspected Vaccine Adverse Events or something. You know, just let people know that this is just a, 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 a hypothesis generating system, but not a hypothesis testing system. These are coincidences, and it's upon us to determine whether these are causal associations. So what happens to the reports? Does anyone go through them one by one? and try and <laughs> make sense of it? Yes, CDC does. They go through all of them. And they, they, look to, they, they know there's a certain amount of background noise. And they look to see whether there's anything that's worrisomely above the background noise. So you look at Rotashield when that happened. I mean, intersusception was not something that was typically reported. And now here you had intersusception, which, you know, prior to the development of rotavirus vaccine was something you would see sort of five to nine months of age. But you didn't see it in a two-month-old or three-month-old. And so when those reports started to come in, that worried them. And they, they used the term signal which I think people will often uh, interpret that to mean that, that this is a causal association, but that's not how they mean it. They mean that this is something to look at. And so then they look at it to see whether it is increased in a vaccinated versus unvaccinated group. You could make the same argument for Bell's palsy with the COVID vaccines. I mean, that was an early signal. But when you looked at, you know, hundreds of thousands, you know, or millions of people, that all went away. When the CDC goes through these events... And it says this is not associated. Does it mark? Does the, does the CDC make a marking on the web page saying this has been determined not to be caused by the vaccine or they don't do that? They usually don't do that. Um, uh, Tom Shumabakura at the CDC generally has taken the lead on this. And he's very good. I mean, he, he, he gets out there and he presents all those data. I wish he wouldn't use the word signal because people hear signal, they think causal association. But, um, but, but you know, they do take this seriously. And it's not easy because they get, you know, yeah. many, many, many uh, reports of that system. And you're trying to sort of sort through this incredibly noisy system to see whether there's anything there. I think it would be very useful to mark each event unrelated in some way. It's not that hard to do that in, from a web perspective. And at least people looking at them would say, oh, this is not related to the vaccine. But unfortunately, they don't do that. I think that would be good, as well as changing the name, as you suggested. I think it would be good to mark on the website uh, what isn't considered to be an association. No, I think in many ways, VAERS was a, a win for the for the anti-vaccine activists. They certainly were very much involved in the yeah. creation of the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act. And the fact that it's it's as noisy as it is, as, as that it's as publicly available as it is, and that it's used in, in such an incorrect manner. You know, here, as Dr. Carlson did, look at all these people who are dying from the COVID vaccine. And, you know, people uh, could reasonably believe it because it sounds like that's what this yeah. system is designed to pick up. And it's not. It's this designed to see whether there's any sort of signals that come up that you should then really test to see whether it is a causal association. Yeah. In fact, in your article, you mentioned that the organization Graphica says most anti-vax claims come from VAERS. That's exactly right. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, I think in the, in the long run, I would argue that system has probably done more harm than good. Interesting. Well, CDC, if you're listening, think about changing the name and maybe marking the website when you <laughs> determine that something isn't involved or associated with the vaccine, that would be useful. 
All right, we will put a link to the original column in the show notes so you can read more about that. And also you should subscribe to Beyond the Noise. You'll get an email with every new post, which happens about every week. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Vincent. 